go into spiritual practice, the meter comes higher and higher towards the body's nothingness. And, and when you finally hit the point where it is absolutely nothing and irrelevant, then, then you know the maker. But you can see in this world that, um, like Jesus says, what plans do you make that do not involve the body? We're not talking just about careers. <coughs> and what would a career even mean unless you valued the body? What would you have a career for if you had no value for the body? But I'm, not, I'm talking about a daily, let's leave the career out of it. Let's leave the next 10, 15, 20 years out of it. Let's leave the next five years out of it, the next year out of it, the next day out of it. Just look as you go through your daily life. What activities do you do? What plans do you make, even in the course of a day, one day, that do not involve valuing the body? And those things that Jeff was reading about, attack, pleasure, and pride, those are all ego uses of the body. Most people on the spiritual journey have a pretty conscious awareness that attack is not of God. You know, most of us have, have been around on planet Earth enough to start to get a bit of a feeling that attack and God don't go together. And yet, as you go through the day, watch your mind and watch your emotions, watch for those little flare-ups where it's like, hmm, 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 you know, just watch as you go through the day how there still must be something down there, something underneath that still values attack. Whenever there's any upset or irritation or annoyance, you follow the thread down into the mind, you'll find a desire to attack is down there. Maybe you haven't gone to war with your neighbors recently. Maybe you haven't <coughs> slaughtered anybody in, in this lifetime or in recent lifetimes. Maybe you haven't slashed somebody's throat. But attack is not in form. It's anything that's not supreme happiness is attack. Anything. It's not supreme. If you're bored, you're attacking. You're trying to attack. You can't really do it, but you're killing this stuff. So that's much more obvious. And then and then what's another form of attack? Competition. If you have any desire or competition at all. Competing with another person, competing, even competing with yourself. You know, I said when you're going out to run track, you're competing with yourself. Nope, can't do that. Your Christ self doesn't compete. So you notice any little <coughs> nigglings that involves competition. You're attracted to watching sporting events and you desire to see a winner. You're misusing the body. You're misusing the body's eyes. Watching the Super Bowl and rooting for a team, misusing the body. Denying your creator. Watching a contest on Jeopardy. A, a, a comp competition of intelligence. Which body knows the most meaningless facts? And you kind of enjoy to see a repeat winner come back and take on challengers. No, that's competition. It has nothing to do with divine love. You're misusing the body if you're watching Jeopardy for that reason. <coughs> <coughs> it's the subtlety. It's the subtlety. Pride. Ah, all the wasted effort put into pride. Trying to look better, be more important, be more noticed, get more respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, nothing to do with God. <clears throat> Trying to have a little bit of a 
puff up. <laughs> you know, very, very subtle. If you go through the day, just go through a day, just one day in your life and you notice where, <laughs> where you want to be noticed personally, you want to be recognized, you want to be acknowledged personally, that's all pride. That's all the misuse of the body. Pleasure, pleasure, ego uses the body for pleasure. We're talking beyond sexuality. Maybe there's a particular kind of a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. You get out of bed, you crawl out, you throw water in your face, and with your eyes half open, you make your way <laughs> to the coffee pot. <laughs> the first thing that greets you in the morning. Just a sip of pleasure, please. That certainly no harm can come of that. The ego uses the body for pleasure. And what plan, literally through the day, would you make if you didn't have that motive underneath there, trying to get something, little scraps? And the ego will tell you, it's a dog <coughs> eat dog world. You deserve a few little scraps during the day to make your day a little better in this hellish world. You know, sneaky, 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 little bits. Pleasures, psychological pleasures, physical pleasures. What plans do you make that do not involve the body? And what is the alternative but this purpose, this holy purpose that the body has? The body can be used as a means to change perception, to change your mind about your mind change your mind about the world, about how you see the world, that's the value that the body has. Solely as a communication device to teach what you would learn over and over. To give, throw caution to the wind and just say, Lord, use me. Make me your instrument today. Let me shine and share and laugh and smile and hug and dance. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord until the point where you don't need to make a noise anymore. 